All right, everybody, welcome back. We are again talking about friction. This time it's going to be a lot more math based and conceptual. And we're going to be talking about the formulas. Okay, so before we should have learned force of friction is dependent on two things. One, the amount of contact between two forces. The more contact it is, the more squeeze it is, the more friction there is. And the less contact there is, there's going to be less friction. And then the second fix part is the coefficient of friction, which is what the two materials rubbing against each other are made of. Are they both slippery? It'll be less coefficient of friction. Are they very uh, rough? It'll be more coefficient of friction. And the, I think the, um, the formula makes sense here. Force of friction is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. So that should all make sense and should be nice. Okay, so let's look into this a little bit. Kinetic friction, so more specifically. So kinetic friction is equal to, uh, force of friction kinetics is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay, pretty simple. Static friction is slightly more complicated, but pretty similar. So static friction is equal to, we're going to talk about this a little bit less, but I should say it's less than or equal to the normal force times the coefficient of, oops, static friction. Okay. And why is that? Um, so why is it, why do we have less than or equal to? So if we can kind of go back to our last examples here, if we looked over here, remember this guy over here, it says that uh, in order for the box to start moving, it needs to be pushed with at least 20 newtons. So it has a maximum static force of 20 newtons. However, Billy pushes the box to the left with 15 newtons. So he's pushing this to the left with 15 newtons. That means the force of frick static is also going to be 15 newtons, but in the opposite direction. So that's why we have this um, less than or equal to, because it can be less than the maximum value, or it could be equal to the maximum value. Hope that makes sense. And if we're looking at the manipulation of the formula, you could pause the video and copy this down. Or if you know the algebra already to be able to do this, then that's great. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this example. A man slides a glass cup across the table to another person. The coefficient of friction between the cup and the table is 0.25. If the cup has a weight of 2.5 newtons, what is the magnitude of the kinetic friction acting on the cup? Okay, so first, we're gonna draw a free body diagram of this. And it could be a little bit complicated, but this cup is sliding to the right. As it's sliding to the right, we should know that there's gonna be a force of gravity which it says over here, well, it actually says the weight, but that's the same thing, 2.5 newtons. And there's going to be a normal force uh, that's going to go up here, force normal, which is equal to 2.5 newtons. It also says that uh, there's a coefficient of friction um, between the cup and the table, it's 0.25. So that's like how rough the two surfaces are. So anyway, that's not part of the free body diagram, but I'm just going to include that. So mu k is equal to 0.25. And then a lot of people are going to say, okay, so then there's a friction, right? That's trying to slow it down. So I'm going to say force of friction kinetic. And I guess we don't know what that is. Okay. We're looking for that. A lot of people will say, oh, there is also a force applied. However, there is no force applied. I know it says a man slides a cup. Whoops, sorry. I know it says a man slides a cup across to another person. Okay, so yes, a man is like initially hitting it. However, while it's sliding, he is not pushing it. So while this cup is sliding, he is not pushing it. And that's why there is no force applied to it while it's sliding. Okay, if he was pushing it the whole time, great. But if he's kind of like throwing it, having this throwing gesture, having a slide, he is not pushing it. Okay, so that's why there's no force applied in this problem. Okay, so what's the magnitude of the force of kinetic friction? So force of friction kinetic, we should know is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So coefficient of friction is 0.25, and the force normal is 2.5. Okay, so let me just put that in my calculator, 2.5 times 0.25, and I get 0. 0.63 newtons, okay? And maybe you could say, it's since going to the left, that's gonna be negative, but it is asking for the magnitude, so I'm gonna keep that positive. Okay, moving on. 
A man slides a glass cup across the, the table to another person. The coefficient connect friction between the cup and the table is 0.44. The cup has a mass of 0.35 kilograms. What is the magnitude of the connect friction acting on the cup? So pretty much did this, maybe do it a little bit more quickly. Force of gravity here is 3.5 newtons. Force normal here is equal to 3.5 newtons. No force applied because it's sliding. If that doesn't make sense, look at the last uh, part of the video or the previous example. And we're looking for the force of friction kinetic while it's sliding. So force of friction kinetic is equal to the coefficient kinetic friction times normal force. Uh, coefficient kinetic friction is 0.44. Normal force is equal to 3.5. I'm going to put that in my calculator, 0.44 times 3.5, and we get 1.54 newtons. Great. Moving on. A hockey puck is sliding across the floor. There is a force of friction of 1.5 newtons acting on the puck. If the puck has a mass of 0.52 kilograms, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the floor and the puck? Okay, so let's look at this. So what we have is we have a force of gravity on this puck of 5.2 newtons. And then we have a normal force on this puck of 5.2 newtons. Remember, no force applied because it's just sliding. So, but force of friction is slowing it down. Force of friction kinetic, which is equal to 1.5 newtons. So let's figure out what this coefficient of friction is. So we have force of friction kinetic is equal to normal force times the coefficient kinetic friction. So this is 1.5, force normal is equal to 5.2, and the coefficient of friction what we're looking for. So I just divide both sides by 5.2, and then we get 1.5 divided by 5.2, uh, 0 0.29. And one thing I wanted to say is you might, you guys might have put this force of friction as like negative 1.5, you know, which is fine. But I just want to say that the coefficient of friction is, it doesn't have units, nor does it have direction. So that should always be left as a positive. Okay. All right, moving on. A block slides across the table. The coefficient of connect friction between the two objects is 0 0.33. The block experiences a force of connect friction of 4.25 newtons. What is the mass of the block? Okay, so a little bit tricky here. So we don't know what the force of gravity is because we don't know what the mass of the block is. We don't know what the normal force is because we don't know force of gravity. We do know force of friction kinetic. This is going to be equal to 4.25 newtons. All right, so let's see what we can figure out here. So we should know force of friction kinetic is equal to mu kinetic times force normal. So this is going to be 4.25 is equal to the coefficient of friction, which is 0.33. And we don't know the normal force. But we should be able to figure this out. I'm going to do 4.25 divided by 0.33, and I get 12.88 newtons. Once I know that, I also know force of gravity is 12.88 newtons. Once I know that, I know force of gravity is equal to mass times gravity. So 12.88 is equal to mass times gravity, 10. Divide both sides by 10. Mass is equal to 1.288 kilograms. A few steps there, but and I also did go fast. So watch it again if it didn't make sense. But it should, hopefully it did make sense to you guys. Okay. All right, moving on. A book is being pushed to the right with 0 0.5 newtons of force. The book has a mass of 0.3 kilograms, and the coefficient of static friction between the book and the table is 0.4. Draw a free body diagram of the book. Okay. I guess I'll just draw it right here. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll draw it right there. Okay, so we have force of gravity. We have force normal. Force applied. And force of friction static. Ooh, yep, should look like that. Great. Part B says, will the book move? So we need to figure out what the maximum force of friction static is going to be. So we need to figure that out. So force of friction static is equal to mu static times Fn. 
or I should say less than or equal to. Erase that. Less than or equal to. Uh, okay, great. So then mu static is equal to 0.4. And the normal force, I could figure that out. This is going to be 3 newtons. And normal force is also 3 newtons. It's 3. Okay. So let's see what we have. 0.4 times 3 is equal to 1.2 newtons. So what this set is telling us is this book needs to be pushed with at least 1.2 newtons before it gets moved. But it is right now only getting pushed with 0.5 newtons. So will the book no move? If not, how much force will be needed to be applied? So it won't move. It needs 1.2 newtons to be getting moving. What is the force of static friction acting on the book while it is being pushed? So while it's being pushed with 0.5 newtons, we should know the force of friction static is going to be equal to 0.5 newtons because it's going to match whatever it's trying to get moved with. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. A block is being pushed to the right with 4 newtons of force. The block has a mass of 0.35 kilograms and a coefficient of static friction between the a book and the table is 0.6. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the table is 0.4. Draw a free body diagram of the book. Okay, so similar thing. Let me draw it here. So we have force of gravity, force normal, force applied. And we don't know if it's moving or not. So we know it's going to be some kind of force of friction. We don't know if that's static or kinetic yet. Uh, will the book move? If if not, how much force will not be me if, if it's going to move? So let's try to figure that out. Force of friction static is equal to normal force times coefficient of static friction. Or I should, again, I should say less than or equal to. I always kind of mix, have a hard time with that. Uh, less than or equal to. Force normal is going to be, so this is 3.5 newtons. This would be 3.5 newtons. 3.5. So coefficient of static friction is 0.6. So let's see what this is. 3.5 times 0.6. So it's 2.1 newtons. What this tells us here is it's getting pushed to the right with four newtons. So this is actually going to be moving. Uh, yes, it will move. Okay. And you can also notice that uh, this is less. And this should be force of friction kinetic at this point because we know it's going to be moving. Great. Part C says, what is the force of friction acting on the book while it is being pushed? So what we should know is it's going to be the force of friction kinetic because it's going to be moving. Oh, wait, what is the force? Oh, so I guess it's asking for the value. But yeah, it's going to be force of friction kinetic. And that's going to be equal to the coefficient kinetic friction times the normal force. Coefficient kinetic friction is 0.4. Normal force, which you found, is 3.5. So let's figure that out. 3.5 times 0.4. 1.4 newtons. All right, I hope that made sense. I hope that's good for you guys. Uh, next time we're gonna be doing the last part of this, which is talking about systems. See you for that one. Bye everyone.